So I've been using the super late in my gaming setup since last year, and it's definitely a really solid option. Some would even argue the best out there for competitive players. But with Razer dropping their upgraded Viper V2 Pro mouse just last month, it's worth asking whether it's still worth picking up the G Pro X or upgrading from it entirely. For a while, the super light, which comes in at just under 63 grams on my scale, had the weight advantage to the 78 gram Mercury Viper Ultimate, which alone was enough to be the deciding factor for a lot of people. But this time around, Razer made some changes, bringing that 78 gram weight down to just 59. Being someone who mated the ultimate a ton, this was a significant difference, but if you've been on the super late and are wondering if you should upgrade to the V2 for the weight solely, it's probably not worth it as the difference is really only noticeable holding them side by side. Using them day to day, both mice are extremely light and make it easy to perform quick movements in game. It's really impressive they both have full solid body constructions as opposed to having holes like we've seen from Glorious, though this weight reduction is not without its drawbacks. The V2 Pro maintains a very similar design to the Viper Ultimate, with the major changes being the removal of the rubber side grips, RGB lighting, and right side buttons. It has a fresh new look but still looks a lot like its predecessor, so if you were a fan of the Viper Ultimate design, this will feel right at home. These changes make it much like the Super Light, which also has this clean plastic build with only two buttons on the left and a matte logo. With the white versions of each mouse, they do look quite similar with their white bodies and black scroll wheel. I've always thought that the Viper had a sleeker design, but it does have a more gamer feel to it, so if you're going for minimalism, Logitech has that unlock. Both have very good build quality, but holding them in hand, I'd say the Super Light still feels more well constructed. Now, it's easy to get into the nitty gritty features when when trying to compare, but really, the majority of the decision just comes down to which shape you prefer. The best way to describe the super light is that it's like a potato, this is a very safe pick, and most people won't have a problem with it. I find that it's really easy to wrap my hand around, and for longer sessions, it stays comfortable. What some people will really like though is how it's elevated at the back. The sides are indented and make it great for when using a fingertip grip, but I still think the mouse is ideal for both claw and palm grip. The Viper has a flatter shape that'll appeal to less gamers, but is one that I much prefer over the super light. I find it to be really comfortable after long hours playing, but having it in hand, the first thing you'll notice is the new non-slip coating it has. Even though the rubber side grips were removed, I still feel like I have a lot of control over the mouse, and holding it feels very nice. I'd say that it's most apparent on the mouse buttons, where on the Ultimate they were very smooth and slippery feeling, whereas here the texture makes it easy to rest your fingers. I did try using the included grip tape, but immediately took it off as it just honestly doesn't feel as nice as the stock feel. The super light coating to me doesn't feel quite as grippy, but it's still very comfortable and I've never felt like it was slipping out of my hands. Now their mouse is ambidextrous now that Razer dropped the right side buttons, but they still have this right handed symmetrical design. I do find this to be a bummer because these are easily two of the top gaming mice available, but neither are suitable for left-handed gamers. On the bright side, the two left buttons we do have on the Viper are significantly improved. With the Ultimate, I had a lot of issues where they get sticky, and the flush design in general made them harder to actuate. The buttons now protrude out a bit more, which makes getting at them easier, and the click itself much more satisfying and consistent. I've always found the buttons on the Super Light to feel very mushy, and now comparing them to the ones on the Viper, it's a major difference. This is something I really hope Logitech improves on in an upgraded model. Turning the mice over and looking to the bottom, you'll see a power switch on the Super Light with no other button, and just a single button on the Viper for both DPI and power. Not having a quick way to adjust DPI with the Super Light is extremely annoying, especially since there's already just two buttons, so if you wanted to remap one and cycle in your DPI, that leaves you with just one more to use for gameplay. You can still change DPI on the Viper, but the old power switch was ditched in favor of a single button, which makes powering on or off way more complicated than it needs to be. You have to hold down the button for 3 seconds, or press it down once to change the DPI stage, but what ends up happening half the time is I try to turn it off, but instead just change the DPI like three times. I wish that we would have seen a dedicated DPI button stay on the mouse, preferably at the top, but for now up there is just a small LED indicator to show the battery level and your current DPI stage. Similarly, once you jump into G-Hub to adjust your sensitivity, the LED on the super light will flash the color associated to the respective stage, or when turning it on, it'll indicate the current battery level. Both sensors here feel very responsive with the Viper having a 30,000 max DPI and the super light with a slightly lower 25,600 DPI. On paper, it looks like a big difference, but in actual use this doesn't matter. I always play between between a 550 to 750 DPI depending on the game, and I'm sure the vast majority of you are somewhere within that range, plus or minus a few hundred, nowhere near those advertised maximums. With their 1000Hz pulling rates using my 160Hz monitor, the gaming experience is so smooth, but I do find that the V2 Pro sensor feels just a tad bit snappier. Though I actually think this has more to do with the stock feet, 
Right out of the box, they're really nice and a big upgrade from the Viper Ultimates. But comparing these two to Super Light, they just don't glide as nicely, and across several different mouse pads, the Viper has had a consistent feel. With that said though, I still think that for more competitive players, third party feet are still a very worthwhile option. Both the Viper and Super Light use a 2.4 GHz dongle to connect to your PC, and thus far I've had no reliability issues playing with either. My PC does sit right next to my mouse pad, but I still wanted to try the extender dongle to use with the Viper, though honestly, it really doesn't feel any different to me than just plugging the connector straight into the system. The same thing can be said for the super light but i do recommend if you're having any sort of connectivity issues to try this first as someone who's constantly switching between different mice having a place inside the mouse to store the usb receiver is something i'm really bummed that's missing here on the viper v2 pro when it comes time to charge, the Viper finally has USB-C, whereas Superlight is stuck with micro USB. This is a huge pain because I have to go out of my way to look for a cable instead of just using the same one that works with almost all of my other devices. Having micro USB was honestly much less of an issue with the Viper Ultimate because of its included charging dock, which was so convenient to use. All you had to do was plop the mouse on when you weren't using it, and every time you wanted to play, it had a charge. This time around, the dock was completely removed, and the connector to even be able to use the old one is gone. With the Superlight, you can go buy a third-party dock for around 30 bucks that replicates the Viper Ultimates, and it's actually what I use most of the time just because the dock has the USB-C port I can use. At a full charge, both mice are going to get roughly 70 hours of battery life. Without letting in either, that allows you to have so much more time out of a single charge. This is nice coming from the Viper Ultimate, which even at a 50% brightness, the RGB just killed the battery so fast. It was hard to get more than a few days of heavy use. I have seen people reporting more than like 50 hours with the V2 Pro, and while I've still gotten pretty close to 70, I have noticed that the battery isn't quite as good as the Superlight. From day one with the V2 Pro, I've been extremely impressed with the optical mouse switches. They've been incredibly satisfying feel to them. Now, that's not to say the Superlights are bad, they're still honestly really nice, I just don't like them quite as much. They're infamously known to suffer double clicking issues, which is worth looking out for, but I've never experienced anything myself. With the Viper's feet and switches, it makes for a great experience in shooters, but the Superlight shape allows me to wrap my hand around it more comfortably, which at times is nicer for single player titles. For reference, here's a quick sound test of the switches on either mouse. With that, the texture of the mouse buttons paired with the optical switches makes me much prefer the V2 Pro for most use cases. The super light scroll wheel though is really nice, it has a good grip to it, and the scroll is very smooth and consistent. Pressing on it is fairly quiet and doesn't feel shaky. As for the V2 Pro, it's still using that same scroll wheel that was present on the Viper Ultimate, and this is actually a big con for me. It has a super rattly sound, and the scroll feels super stiff and inconsistent. It has a different sound scrolling up compared to down, and just feels cheap overall. This is one of the worst things about the Viper, and the fact that it wasn't fixed here is very annoying. Of course, for your listening pleasure, here's what it sounds like. So, pulling it all together, these two mice, the Logitech G Pro X Superlight and Razer Viper V2 Pro, are great options for competitive gamers. Both are pricey, with the Superlight retailing at 160 and the Viper at 150 US. Comparing the V2 Pro to the Viper Ultimate, there's actually less features at the same retail price, which I think is a big problem, and in my review, I actually recommended just waiting for a sale or buying the still really solid Viper Ultimate, which can be found for just around $80. Though the one scenario I did recommend the V2 Pro in, and now the Superlight as well, is if weight is very important to you. If you're a very competitive player, Player and want the most control over your game, it's much easier to justify that price tag. Between these two, me personally, I would pick the Viper due to the quality of its switches, the super smooth stock feet, and its shape, which has been very comfortable for a fingertip grip. I do miss the charging dock, and I'm disappointed we lost side buttons while remaining the same price, but the Super Light hasn't had either, and has been this price since its release back in 2020. The V2 Pro brings Razer a lot closer to the Super Light. It has most of the things that people liked about it, but also the shape of the Viper, for those who prefer that. Even though I prefer the Viper, I actually think the Super Light still shines with its shape because it's elevated higher and is a safer pick for most gamers, making it great paired with a claw or palm grip. Its coating still provides good grip, the switches are solid, and is a super clean design and great build quality. I really hope this video was helpful for those of you trying to decide which mouse will make a better addition to your gaming setup. With that said though, I've been Cole, and I appreciate you all for watching. Catch you in the next one, take care.